The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. <coughs> the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People who have hung around the church for a while already know that a tiny mustard seed grows into an unusually large plant, actually up to 15 feet tall. It's pretty good. But what you might not have heard about is how devious this little seed can be. Think about the farmer in this reading, planting fields by hand, sowing seeds a few at a time. Not a real sophisticated agricultural enterprise like we have today where the machine, you know, lays them down, you know, and, and it, but it was more like broadcasting, you know, you just, shoo. So you get yourself a sack of seeds for the crop that you want to plant, and all is good. You go out, and your plowed ground is ready, and you have no reason to think that there's a mustard seed hiding in your seed sack. The mustard seed is so small that you don't even notice it in your hand as you're tossing all of those seeds around into the ground. But you know what? At some point, there's a 15-foot mustard tree in the middle of your wheat field. And you start saying, where'd that come from? Mustard seeds, hiding, unpredictable, invasive, unexpected, sneaky. I bet Jesus' disciples were surprised when they heard him say, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. After all, the things of God are supposed to be orderly. If God's kingdom is going to get planted, then surely the planting is going to be done in an orderly and predictable way, following a recognizable pattern, everything laid out in neat and tidy rows. No, no, Jesus, it's much better to say the kingdom of God is like soybeans or corn. Beautiful rose. What gets planted is well planned, and what results is altogether like what was planted. But God's kingdom, you remember that reality filled with forgiveness, reconciliation, healing, peace. God's kingdom, Jesus says, is like a mustard seed. And that kingdom, that reality is all around us, and it's in us, Jesus says, 
even as we continue to seek for it. It's like a mustard seed hiding in the sack, hiding in the sower's hand, hiding in the church, hiding in the mind of God, waiting for the moment to become the surprise of the gospel that always is as it appears. Forgiveness for the unforgivable, surprise. Healing for the worst kind of breach. Peace for the hopelessly troubled. Surprise, love for the unlovable. Resurrection for the dead. Like a treasure hidden in a field. Like a pearl of great value uh, hidden among the ordinary ones. Like the tastiest fish hidden among the rest of the catch. Like, like little kids elbowing themselves to get the best position at the communion rail. The kingdom of heaven is like that, like a mustard seed. The old adage says, people plan and God laughs, but only because God's kingdom is fuller and richer and more inclusive. Like a mustard seed, and suddenly you see a 15-foot tall tree of grace in the middle of your very well-organized but very messy spiritual field like a mustard seed. God whispers in your ear and the people outside of the box who you haven't thought of are suddenly sharing your table. Like a mustard seed, God's kingdom invades our certainties and our boundaries and creates out of it something new. With a little water and the right word, little James and Trace are baptized today and Kayla too all by the book, lined up, straight rows, certificates signed. They're there, by the way, don't forget them. <laughs> Something new has come out of the old. And our job is to play it straight for them, to keep the promises made by parents and sponsors and congregation, to do the church thing, to do the prayer thing, to do the Bible thing, the worship thing for each of them, with each of them. So it becomes for all of them, ha, the natural thing. But maybe most of all, our job is to help them come to recognize the 15 foot tall tree of grace that one day may appear unexpectedly in the field of their life like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is all around them and in them today by water and word. And we pray that as James and Trayson and Kayla continue to seek for that kingdom, as they continue to seek for it, we pray that they'll know it when they see it.
generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Shine the light of understanding on your church on earth. Bind us together in the word to share your love with the world. Let all the baptized, especially Kayla, James, and Trayson, live in the constant surprise of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Protect birds and their nests, fields full of crops, the seas and the fish that swim in them. Inspire us to care for the creation you love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Raise up just and wise advocates and judges, from small-town courts to international tribunals, enlighten all leaders to discern what is right and do what is good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Nurture faith in those who doubt. Lift up those who are weak in body, mind, or spirit. Heal the sick, comfort the grieving, and surround with love those facing their last days, especially Jim, Jerry, Jean, Harold, Marie, Marlon, Carrie, Joanne, Tony, Todd, Michelle, Dorothy, Bob and Joyce, Greg, Nancy, Anna, Jean, Stephen and Jody, and Stephen.